This is the Die Play Play Podcast, the Die Hard Duke Basketball Fan Podcast. A little conflicted, AC. I mean, not like that bracket reveal. Yeah, you know that of Brooklyn. I mean, I don't know how you do it. You're, you're not that big of a fan of Virginia Tech, so I, I can understand the difference. These motherfuckers um, get my money every year. <laughs> big well, enough. But, uh, yeah, this is a Duke podcast, and we're going to focus on that until we do, you know, kind of break down our uh, NCAA predictions and WR Final Fours and what happens more specifically in Duke, uh, in Duke's bracket uh, in Brooklyn. Um, we obviously open up with Vermont, and then we play the uh, the winner of uh, Wisconsin versus the U, JMU. Um, so we'll, we'll see what the happens U. there. But um, <laughs> uh, I, I kind of want to start things off. We're going to talk about the ACC tourney and just kind of give a brief recap. We're going to talk about what does Duke need to do to get themselves back. Uh, Pablo, I wanted to open it up to you first because, you know, after yeah, it was Friday afternoon, you know, our text chain was blowing up. You know, there yeah. was a lot of things being said. The emotions were still running high. Um, yeah. You know, we'll get to, the, to what does Duke need to do. But, you know, I came out of that. Obviously, State went on and his work run five and five games. But I was extremely disappointed in Duke's effort. Now that we've had kind of a week to kind of sit back and, you know, let temper flare a little bit and calm down, where do you kind of see – where do you kind of see things from a more even keel perspective um, for, for Duke? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I'll say uh, that was some bullshit. But um, anyway, uh, nah, man, I mean – it was disappointing, obviously. You know what I'm saying? You wanted, you know, Duke to do better than, you know, what they did, you know, in advance and, and ultimately win the win the tourney. But, you know, it didn't happen. They didn't play well enough. And like you said, they didn't put out the effort that, you know, we figured that they would. But I mean, now just looking back at it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not really tripping. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it did, it didn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't improve anything. You know what I'm saying? It, would, it just would have just been what it was, and we would just be playing an attorney anyway. So I think, you know, this might be a blessing in disguise, not because of they lost, but maybe they got a little more rest. You know what I'm saying? They got some guys that are tired, possibly banged up. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But um, maybe, I mean, I guess that's the brightest that's the that's the only thing I think that could be like the positive out of that. Maybe they got a little more rest than everybody else because they lost in what? What was it? The, the Thursday. Third? Uh, yeah. yeah, Thursday. Thursday. So they got a little Yeah, they got a, a little more rest than everybody else. So I mean, other than that, I'm still high on this team, man. If we play up to our potential, I, I keep saying the same thing. You know what I'm saying? We could we could beat anybody in the nation. So yeah, we move. Well, we got no choice now. It's, it's one and done time. This this team, you know, plays Friday night, and you win, you move on, you lose, it's over. But uh, we'll talk about the ACC tournament real quick. Um, let's start with that Duke NC State game. AC, um, mm-hmm. we'll leave all the superlative for NC State to D, but um, you know, we'll talk, you know, kind of just about our game. And I thought it was uh, reminiscent of so many other games where. We just came out with a lack of focus, a lack of heart, lack of heart, lack of effort in the first, you know, few minutes of the game. They punched us in the mouth, and you know, we kind of responded here and there, but I just never saw from an effort level a team that came in here to this year saying that they were focused on winning championships, mm-hmm. and that was the effort that we got. <clears throat> I mean, it looked it looked like a couple of things. It, it looked like a team that was shell shocked. Like it looked like a team that was already prepared to lose from the jump, man. Like even like coming out in warm ups, they were flat, dog. Like I, we were there live, me, Jack. Um, we were there live watching the games. They were the, with Eddie from the from the Five Point Fan. We were watching the game live, and that was the comments we made, man. They just they looked flat from from jump, and they, honestly, they looked like a team that had won an ACC championship before and was like, we did it already, like. Right. whatever you know what i mean like it, it looked like a team that that already already prepared to lose almost like just the way they played like quite honestly like look I, I, we defend john shire all the time like no adjustments were made whatsoever like we just we kind of did the same old stuff and like we never went into any of our normal shit man none, none of the short roll actions none none of the putting dj burns in space action none of that stuff none of the stuff we did the previous game we played them in raleigh so we didn't do any of it. It was very uncharacteristic in that regard. So, I mean, 
what what do we say? Do we say this is a team that's like broken and beaten, or do we say that this is a team that just yeah, we played a game where we didn't do what we normally do, and then we lost that game? I, in my opinion, that's what it was. It was a team that didn't normally do what they typically do, and, and we lost the game because of it. Like, I, it's not like we forgot how to play everything. It's not, it's not like we forgot how to play basketball. Like there's other things that this team does that on a normal day we would beat any team that we face, but. And in that regard, we didn't do it. So hats off to NC State. They won. Yeah, they deserve the win. Um, D, we'll start here. Uh, yeah. What frustrated me the most is the, the constant fact that <clears throat> all year long, our fan base has been all over Colin Filipowski. You know, somewhat that he tries sometimes, bad body language, doesn't give it 100 every game. He was the only guy to me that gave 110%. He's the only guy. And it's not just it's not just the stat sheet. It was, no, it was the effort. If we're gonna talk about positives, I think positives come from the two bigs, Mark Mitchell and Filipowski, played like bigs. They played like they were the best man on the floor. They kept the ball above their chest. They went straight to the basket. No, no silly stuff with the fadeaway turnarounds. They went through contact, got to the line. I mean, what a key play, like, in the beginning of the game, right, when Flip called for that lob. Like, he was calling for that, like, yeah, like, like you, like, yelling in the – you could hear him in the arena yelling for the lob. Like, and they, they finally threw it to him. He got that layup. Should have got a foul, too. But, hey, man, like, he was – from like, from that moment on, like, you knew, like, he was he was engaged. Sorry, Dick. No, you're good. It was the it was the first time that I've seen Filipowski take over a game, and he absolutely took over that game. Mm-hmm. And I've said this before. It's on record. You can look at past podcasts and see it. For this Duke team to succeed, you have to hit those those shots from the outside. And all the shooters on the team were off. If you want to blame friend of the podcast, Jalen Blakes, for, you know, splitting McCain's eye and McCain going over three, it's that's valid. I think that's valid. He had a Band-Aid over his eyelid. That's probably a little frustrating. You know, I mean, it's just – but if you want to take a positive, you get – Mark Mitchell and Filipowski absolutely took over that game. Duke was in it in the end. Um, State didn't really run away with it. Duke kind of gave it to him. Hey, yo. (laughs) It's crazy. Heck, don't give it to you. Whoa. And, you know, yeah, and State played a crazy good game. But they also played five crazy good games, and it was one of the more impressive things I've seen Mm -hmm. an ACC school do in the tournament. Yeah, no, no other ACC team has ever gone five in five days. So and technically, it's the most impressive thing that's ever happened in the ACC well, tournament. Well, really. And the teams that they beat too, you know, they yeah. beat Carolina, they beat Duke, um, Clemson, a, a, a crazy buzzer beater to send it to, to overtime against mm-hmm. UVA. Pass off to State, and you know, thank God State won. Uh, it gives us a little bit more of a breathing room. To be, thank God that the ACC doesn't <laughs> run through Bay Cat ever. Oh, so, co- collectively here. We have the same that was a question ACC. anyway. First of all, like collectively here on this, we have five people here. We have the same amount of ACC championships as Baycott does, which is zero. So <laughs> congratulations to the guy who says that. Mondo. Yeah, runs, runs through him. Um, But you brought up Mark Mitchell, D. I actually want to touch on that. I thought that his stats went better than he played. Um, I thought in the first – I mean, he got stumped out within the first two minutes of that game. Because he was playing like a bitch. I mean, just call it what it is. I'm um, call it what it is. I mean, seriously, it, it play soft. And he did some nice things later on in the game, but you know he goes over four from the free throw line. <coughs> um, we need those. I think I think that he kind of shies away now from from contact because he doesn't want to go to the free throw line. I thought uh, out of everybody else, not flip included. He was the best of the rest, but I, it's, it's just, I mean, I'm getting frustrated just talking about that game because there were so many factors there that Duke just didn't bring it. And, and I'll, I'll go to you on this, AC. Jeremy Roach has had a bad couple weeks. He's had a bad couple weeks. So to Pablo's point, you know, maybe the time off, maybe not necessarily for health reasons, but maybe it's just to clear your mind, you know. Mm-hmm shoot your way out of it in, in practice and, and just kind of get a fresh start. Yeah, I mean, the, winning a winning a conference tournament has never been a prerequis- prerequisite for winning a national championship unless you're a mid-major and you have to do that to get into a tournament. You know what I mean? Like, 
winning the conference tournament doesn't mean you're going to win the title. So, right. like, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we can we can say, you know, we, we can bring we can make rain out of or make lemons out of lemonade, whatever we want to do. But, yeah, I mean, uh, Jeremy hasn't been explosive for a while because of that ankle. The ankle was clearly hurting him again during the game. He was heavily taped the left side. I've seen pictures now of them, you know, working out and stuff. And it looks like his ankle's not even taped when they're working out. So I don't know if that's just because it's a light workout or what. But, you know, maybe he's on the mend a little bit. Tyrese tweaked his ankle again during that game. McCain had the eye thing. Like, our guards are banged up a little bit. So hopefully, you know, hopefully as we progress through the tournament that they they get a little healthier as we move on. Um, because, I mean, we, we need we need guys, those guys. We need Roach, we, and especially because we're not going to have Foster. So, yeah, I mean, it was a big deal. What you said about Mark Mitchell was true, man. Watching the game, I mean, he was he was guarding guards on defense. A couple times had to guard bigs, obviously, when they went with the two big set with Diara and, and um, what's his name? Um, not Burns, but um, what's the guy's name? Talking about the white dude. Yeah, Middlebrooks. Yeah, Middlebrooks. So obviously he had he would have to guard, uh, but every now and again McCain would switch off on Middlebrooks, and then you'd have Mitchell on DJ Horn, like and he was getting cooked. So, I mean, he he whatever is irking him mentally, he's got to get back in it, like because we need him. Like we're, we're obviously talking about the tournament. There's some matchups coming up where he's going to be vital, and the stats he put up, I, I called it fool's gold. The stats he put up in that game were fool's gold to me. Like yeah, I agree. So I, I agree with you. Like I, I, he hit two threes. I thought that was impressive. You know, I mean, some of the other things he did, I thought were that was fine. But I mean, he missed a, missed a bunch of bunny layups, missed a bunch of st- other stuff. Obviously, missed those free throws, and in a close game again, that's what matters. And this Duke team has not been blown out by anybody. Every game we're losing is by single digits. So when you're talking about somebody who's so important as Mark Mitchell, those little things really truly do matter. They do, like it, it does defensively and offensively it matters. Yeah, I wish I could uh, disagree with you there, but let's let's. Kind of flip the gears a little bit. Pablo, what does Duke need to do in order to kind of get back to playing confidently and, you know, with with a verb which they they haven't had in the last couple? First and foremost, they're just going to need guys to to play as a cohesive team. They need their their, their players to step up, man. They need the leadership. Um, They need their team captains to play better. Uh, Obviously, Flip is going to do what he do. Jeremy has to step up, you know what I'm saying? Like he's got the big reputation, especially, you know, March and the March time frame. you know what I'm saying? He's got to live up to that expectation, you know what I'm saying? Like he's got it now, you know what I mean? We know mm-hmm. that he hooped in March, so he got he got to show it again, you know what I'm saying? We definitely need Tyrese to to step up, but more than anything, man, is that we just need on-court leadership, bro. Like we just need leadership on the court. We can't have our players, you know, when – you know, if the game is going good or bad, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just can't have our guys, you know, just trying to take – That's I know it sounds crazy, but they can't just be looking at John Shire for everything, every play. They can't keep doing that. You know what I'm saying? They got to have somebody on the court to say, hey, this is what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? I know what coach want to do. All right, got it. You know what I'm saying? This is what we're doing. We don't need to keep looking at him. We don't need to keep doing that shit. We got to play together. We're the ones playing the game. They gotta just they just gotta go out there and swing. You know what I'm saying? They gotta hit first, they gotta strike first. And they can't let obviously they can't fucking let these teams jump on them and get a big lead. You know what I'm saying? It's like we do that way too much. You know what I mean? We gotta start early. You know what I mean? So I feel like anytime it's a situation like that, you know, as a coach and shit, like you should go with like your best play just right out the gate. You know what I'm saying? Get your best guy to score a basket that you know is almost at guaranteed to score. I mean, you just gotta strike first, man. We just need that on court leadership, basically, just to sum it all up. These dudes got to do better. Pops, to your point, man, real quick, like one of the things that that baffled me the most in that NC State game, like moving down down the stretch of that game, like we're still in it, like still within a couple of possessions here and there or whatever. And after like every timeout or every dead ball or whatever, like the person leading the huddle was Jared McCain. Like, awesome, cool to have a freshman who is going to be willing to take that on. But no, no. Uh uh-uh. uh, that should never be. The, I don't care how good he is. I don't care how much of a leader he is or how great his personality is. That's the freshman should never be the guy leading your huddles in those situations. Chris Duhon would never lead a huddle when he was playing with Shane Batty. There's no way he shut the fuck up. Like let Shane. Talk. Yeah. Like there's no way, man. There's no way. Well, that, that was I think that hurt me so much. That bothered me, man. I think it's situational because, and I think it's natural for Jeremy Kane because between him and Tyrese, they're probably the most vocal. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? They're probably the most I vocal agree, guys I just, on the team on the to court. To your point, though, I don't it's like not that. An ideal, but you would think, you know, especially for this team, it's not an ideal situation, especially when you got a kid that's been there for four years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's done his thing. He's played with all these other NBA players. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, they he was the man on the team. Right. Right. Saying, in crunch time. It's, it's a it's a whole lot easier to be more vocal when you're Jeremy Roach when you don't go one for eight. When does Jeremy Roach go one for eight? But that's I don't when, think it matters. That's when you, yeah. But that's when you have really. My point is that that's a good that's a fair point. Is my point is nobody is questioning this if if some shots fall for Duke, which is why no, I say right. you can't Absolutely. shoot twenty five percent from the three point line if you're Duke because that's what you do. You shoot three. But in March, said, but we're going to shoot the most three, so we got to make them. We but look, in March, in March, in the NCAA tournament, no on neutral ground, when you only have one day of rest between your next game, there's going to be games where, right. he, where we or he or somebody else shoots one of eight. And be, just because he's shooting one of eight doesn't mean he can't still be in the huddle saying, all right, look, I'm off, man. Y'all got to help me out. Like, you do your thing. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's what a leader does. Like, right. you, he should be the one talking. What I am saying is Oops, didn't I, I find it – look, I find okay. it problematic that – are that we have three captains on the floor at times and Jared McCain was the one speaking. That that's my problem. And and it wasn't just I'm not just saying it was a one-off. I'm not saying I'm not saying it was one huddle that it happened. It was lit dude. I'm telling you right now watching that shit live, it was every huddle from like the 8 minute mark on through the rest of that game where Jared McCain was the one bringing them together. They were, everybody else was looking off in the stands, shaking their heads at the floor and Jared's like come here, come here, come here. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's that's problematic to me, dog. And that, that he's for been this, doing for the season Roach has been more vocal than he was in the past. No, I, sure, I would say sure. That. He never once looked engaged against But you think about no. it. Like think about this, y'all. I'm not saying this, that's like, okay. I'm just Jeremy saying. Roach is, and it's not a hit on Jeremy Rose because he is who he is, you know what I'm saying? And we all love him, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. we, I will never criticize a player. But I just find it funny that Jeremy Roach is more vocal towards the other team as far as talking shit than he mm -hmm. is with his own team. Exactly. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. So, I didn't see him talking a lot of shit on, against State. Well, you can't talk shit when you're playing. I feel like he didn't even he, – like he was already ready to go, like – but that, and it wasn't just him. I'm just saying we're we're talking right. about Jim. So I, I don't think it was. I think the two. I think two people showed up to play that game. Three people. Three people. I, I guess I mean, my biggest point is. Sorry, pause. I just want to say. Real no, quick. Ahead, my, ahead, I think my biggest point is in March in the tournament when it's a one off, and and we know like it's not cliche to say it. Guards and seniors win UNCAA championships, and knowing that this stretch of games that we have. It can't. It can't be Jared McCain leading our huddles. It has to be Roach. It has to come from our captains. That's that's my point, man. It just it has to come, and, and not just our captains. It has to come from Roach. If he, he's if the he, one who's done it. He's the one who's been there. If you think about, if, if you think about, hold on, real quick. If you think about uh, the 2015 national championship game, freshmen scored every single point in that second half. But every time mm -hmm. they did, who the vocal the vocal leader was still Quinn Cook. Mm -hmm. Quinn Cook was still the one. If you go back and watch that game, which I've watched a million times, he's the one, you know, telling people where to go, yep. pointing, you know, sharing them on, even though he's not the one getting the buckets. Yep. And I think that that speaks volumes as a leader. You don't have to score. No, like, nobody expects you to go out there and line it up every single time you play. You still have to lead, though. And it's mm -hmm. much, much tougher to lead when shots aren't falling your way. And that kind of shows you – and I'm not saying this is who Jeremy Roach is. I'm just saying that's the toughest time to lead. And it shows mm -hmm. you what kind of level of leader you are when things aren't going your personal way, that you're still there for your team. And I think that like that's the scary thing to me is that after that game, you know, Jeremy Roach is out there saying that we're going to hold a player's only meeting. And to me, Palms, and this is kind of where we started this whole thing last Friday, uh, it was uh, to me, it's too late for that shit. It's too late for a players only meeting when you're going into tournament. Like the next team you play is the first round of the tournament. To me, it's too late for that shit. So what has to change? Yeah. Can it change? Can it change? Like it has to be I on mean, the players, right? It's completely on the players, but I also think that there needs to be some things that need to happen, you know, schematically, you know what I'm saying? Especially like I think what we do on offense is great. I think all that shit is cool, but I think we need to you know, do some, and this is just, you know, going off to another, not another point, but it, it, it all goes together. But, um, so first and foremost, I mean, is it too late? 
Uh, I wouldn't. I, I don't think it's ever too late, but I will say that this isn't the the, the best time. You know what I'm saying? It's not ideal. It's not ideal. You know what I'm saying? It's not ideal because at the end of the day, you still got to go to war, right? And just because you got to go to war tomorrow, don't mean that you you know what I mean you don't lock in and you focus. You don't focus today. You know what I'm saying? And just and going into it, so you still got to go to battle. So it's never too late. It's not ideal, but um, I think that what we do, uh, the biggest thing for us offensively, man, I think there's some things that need to change. I'll say that. I'll just say that from a coaching standpoint, like I think that they need to take a hard look at what they're doing, you know, and the way that they're getting their buckets because teams are, are keying on certain things, man. That's why you're seeing a lot of stuff being cut off mm -hmm. on our offense, especially getting to the rim. You know what I'm saying? Because – these teams are doing different things. They're icing ball screens. They're doubling. You know, they're fucking showing real hard, hard hedging. You know, they're doing different things because they know what we're going to do. All that could be, you know what I'm saying, eliminated if you just tweak just small little things in the offense and you get some things going towards the rim instead of, you know what I'm saying, side to side, side to side, all the side to side movement. And then you don't have, you know what I'm saying, you have a roller that's not really rolling hard. You have a, you know, you have a roller that, doesn't even get the ball because they're not even really looking at the, you know what I mean? It's like just different, so many different things, like nuances going on that like just watching the game, you know, that, you know, we can pick up on that shit, you know what I'm saying? So I can imagine that the coaching staff is probably seeing the same things that we're seeing and that they're going to make some small changes. And I feel like if they do, we can, you know, we have a chance, you know what I'm saying? To do some special shit, you know what I'm saying? Especially with the type of talent that we have, Obviously, we we missing Caleb, which is huge. But pause, that was crazy. But you know what I'm saying? I think that I think we cool, man. I I, I just think that uh, it's I don't think it's too late, TK. I don't think it's too late. I think they just need to fucking really, really, really whatever conversation that they had, they really need to take it to heart. And they need to fucking look in the mirror, and they need to say it's time to fucking play. Period. For, forget everything. It's, Go it's, ahead, D. No, I'm just going to, it's not too late, but I also don't think you need to like go and, and change a bunch of stuff with the offense. I mean, the yeah. bench didn't show up. No, the starters didn't show up. Three people came to play basketball that night. And y'all say what you want about Mark Mitchell. That dude played 36 minutes. He was hooping. You know what I'm saying? That dude played 36 minutes. I, I mean, he missed four three free throws. He missed some big ones in the first half. And, and in the second half, some but like some, you say, D free throws win when you games, right? I'm not, I'm not going away from that. <clears throat> and they definitely win games when NC State shoots less than they do. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this dude team has to hit shots. I can't I can't stress that enough. Yeah. They have to hit shots. And I I almost disagree with you, uh coach. Like Duke pretty much was leading in points in the paint the whole game. The pick and roll was working, it was there. There was a lot of missed layups, but there was a lot of good plays too. A lot of crazy no calls by the ref, yeah. a lot of calls by the ref. And that's gonna and that's neither here nor there because each team's gotta play with that, right? But when when the ball goes low and the double team comes and they do make that right pass to the corner for the wide open shot, you have to be ready mm -hmm. to knock that down. Like you have Absolutely. to knock down some of them because that's what Duke's offense is. Even coach mm -hmm. said we're gonna shoot more threes than anybody in the country. I like it. And and I would say, look, offensively – sorry, Dave, go ahead. No, I'm just saying you got to make those shots because that's the Duke offense. When mm -hmm. it, when the action goes and we get downhill, we're in the paint, double team comes, kick it out, you got to be ready to make that shot. We can't shoot 25% and win games. I guess yeah, no, you, you're exactly right because I think – Offensively, I'm, I'm like I, I definitely see what what Pops is saying about offensively. Some, some a couple slight slight tweaks. I think we have enough on tape from throughout the season. Like John, John has done so many different things with the offense. We talked about this before. I think sometimes he overcoaches. He's I done so many things say, throughout the maybe, season. Maybe he needs to like just take his hands off a little bit. Yeah, and just he, he, roll, he's roll done up. so many different things throughout the season. We we've, we've been a short roll team. We've been a motion team. We've done <laughs> so many things with with. <laughs> different actions here and there and stuff and but but never all at the same time and the only time we've kind of done all those things at the same time was honestly that uva game so we have a lot of stuff on tape and a lot of stuff we've practiced before that we know that we can do so hopefully we in implement that in the tournament i think defensively is where we really have to kind of look and like 
look at ourselves and say, all right, what are we going to do defensively to make sure that, you know, it's not going to be a problem. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and advocate for anything, any specific type of defense or whatever else. I just, the coaches and players definitely need to find some kind of a defensive identity moving through this tournament. And that's why I feel like it's not too late. I see what you're saying, TK, about that, you know, players only meeting before the tournament starts too late. Don't forget the tournament is still a month long event. So maybe this players only meeting happens. Maybe something happens in practice that they all right, they lock in on it and like this is what we are going to do. This is going to be our identity moving forward for these next six games. And so so maybe this first weekend is all about just building belief. You know, what I mean, maybe we don't blow Vermont out. Maybe we don't blow the team we play in the second round out. If we win by one, we move on in the tournament. Cool. As, as long as this team is building belief through the tournament, that's all I care about. Like it's not a, it's not a one off. It's not like every game matters tomorrow. It's. We have a game tomorrow. Let's make sure we take care of that game tomorrow, and then we move on, and we survive in advance, and we, we believe in what we're doing as we're doing that. And I think that's the most important thing for this team. I, I, would, al- I, would, al- I would almost argue it would be better if we didn't blow Vermont out because sure. you blow them out, and then, oh, well, we, we know we can do this now. And then the next thing you know, they play Wisconsin or JMU, and you get down 12-2. to two. I feel like every time that that's happened this year, and that's why I'm taking the entire body of work. Sure. Where as long as we're at least plus one, that's all I care about. Yeah, of course, no doubt. But it's it's like you know, we said <laughs> weeks ago, where you you can't give good teams a ten or a twelve point win. You can't do it. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't spot but anymore. the thing is, that's who this team has been, and I I, I know we're gonna. That's see what that I'm saying. Isn't too late for that's them to attitude. lose. If you see that in the tournament, they lose because that's an attitude and energy thing. Well, correct. Maybe, that's maybe not. That's not maybe not. We, we every game started. we've been close. Every I game we've if. been close. I said every if. game we've been within single digits. I we're going to see. We like we're gonna see it. We're gonna see it. We are going to go down to a team early. Does this players only meeting or does some of the other stuff that they've worked on in practice? Does that translate to instead of where it's been a loss? Some of these, you know, these uh, these other games we've had this season where we lose those games, does that this time translate into a win? And that's the that's the biggest thing. What can this team to do to translate t- that into a win? And in my opinion, the biggest thing you can do to translate those going down early to a team like that and translating that to a win is defensively we got to make sure we have some form of, of an identity. So if we do face a team that's hitting hot shots right off the bat, we can slow that down. We can we can come back to a huddle and say, hey, look, all right, this is happening. But we know this is what this team is weak at. Let's make sure we exploit that. That's right. that's the biggest thing, man. I don't, I don't like our losses. We did not exploit teams at their weakness. When we win games, we exploited teams to their weakness consistently. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, that that's really when we're going to find out what that player is only meeting. Like, what was the result of it? Like, when we get down, we'll, we'll mm-hmm. get down at some point in the tournament, right? Maybe it'll be yeah. Friday. Maybe it'll be Sunday. Maybe it'll be next weekend. Who knows? But at some point, we will get down in the tournament, right? And it might be by multiple possessions. Mm-hmm. And that will be – that will show us what came out of that player's only meeting. Absolutely. Because, yeah, we can change some things schematically on offense. We certainly need to change some things on defense. But ultimately, it comes down to the players getting back on defense, stopping the ball, going after rebounds with – Abandoned. Like these are things that you just watch the tape from from the NC State game. They did none of those things. That's, I, yeah. I know, man, I, I I thought they played pretty good defense. They just didn't rebound the fucking ball when they when they put up a bad shot. Like the defense was solid. I think the defense, the defense was, was pretty fine. solid. Like, it would have been okay. I think that our small, small guards are being picked on. Our small guards are being picked on. They had their spots though where it looked kind of bad because. Sometimes it kind of looked like an effort thing out there. So, you know, that's one of those things that if it's like two or three of those type of plays that happen, you know, they're going to classify it as playing bad defense, you know, I mean, for, the got, mo- for the whole game. Look, for the most you've got to give the start. Saying, you've got to give the start. I'm, I'm giving it more. Nobody's saying effort. this team is – look, There's nobody's no saying this team. Rotation. The bench played eight minutes. Like, y'all <laughs> saying, look, look man, that's just going to happen in the tournament, though, D. D, we talk about it all the time in the tournament. You play your best players in the tournament. Look, so hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If our five best players play 40 minutes, awesome. I I, I want our best players on the floor. I don't need Ryan Young seeing the floor. I don't need Sean Stewart seeing the floor all the time. I don't need TJ Power seeing the floor all the time. If Tyrese is good, if Roach is good, if Jeremy Kane's balling, I don't need them to come out of the game. It's the tournament. This is surviving advance. You play your best. Those guys exist 
only because those guys are in foul trouble or tired or aren't playing well. That's the only reason your bench exists. Otherwise, your five best players play. That's how it goes. And, it, and if, you're, if one of your five best is one of the guys off the bench, so be it. That's how it goes, right? Like we talked about that with Sean Stewart. If Sean Stewart's playing better than Mark Mitchell or playing better than, than Roach or, or, or McCain or anybody else, then, then you've built him up and now he's a part of what you do and he can step in and take on that mantle. But if he's not one of the five best, he doesn't need to play. And like, it, it, it is, this is March now. Like we're talking about March. Like January, February was for development. March is for playing. And and that's that's where I sit with it. So no, like I'm not saying we're a bad defensive team. I'm not saying that we played horrible defense the entire time against state, but in close games, when you need to get a stop, you have to have an identity to do that. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying anything yeah. weird or a hot take. That's nothing weird. That's everything we've ever talked about. No, I all I'm saying is I thought they played good defense. The lack of rebounding was an issue. I just said that, that we didn't play bad defense the entire game. But when we needed stops, we ain't get them. And that's why we lost the game. We lost the game because we couldn't get stops when we needed them. I mean, am out, I lying? Right. We we out-rebounded NC State. I ain't lying about that. Right. When we we out-rebounded them. NC State. NC State didn't shoot great. But there are so many plays there, especially defensively, where we just let them score or let them get loose balls that let the score. Yeah. Second chance points, they dominated us. And to me, that is a lot of effort things. I was gonna, there's eight. a lot of effort there, but you know I'm saying, saying I, to me, it's not that we're a bad defensive team. It's we're a very inconsistent and inopportune uh, defensive team, and we saw that against UNC, when, especially at Cameron, where every time we cut the lead, we gave up some kind of garbage or we turned the ball over in an inexcusable way. Those are winning plays, and that's what I'm saying. Is like they, they, you have to like I hope what comes out of this players only meeting is that they say enough's enough. We ain't going to do that shit anymore. It's about that mental toughness that you have to have in order to be a championship level team. You told me all off season, you came back to be a champion. Fucking show me. Because the effort and inconsistencies, you're not showing me that. I'm not saying it's not impossible. That's a fact. But the, you got to show me. The on energy's the not there. Before the ACC tournament, D, you brought up a great fucking point, and I thought it was an amazing point. I wasn't on the show. I would have clapped my hands for you if I was on the show. You said something that was very poignant, which was, when it came to the all the voting for all ACC defensive team, we ain't have a single fucking vote. So I'm not saying we're a bad defensive team. I'm saying that there's no idea. We don't have a player like Reese Beekman that we can hang our hat on. We don't have somebody like that. We can hang our hat on like all right, he, he's got us and we can pick up the slack behind him. We don't have somebody like that clearly because the voters and everybody else clearly decided that we didn't have somebody like that. Now you're talking about a team that was also third in the conference when it came to most of the defensive stats, metrics, everything else you want to talk about. Sure. So we clear and we held everybody we played under their normal scoring average. Some of that's pace. Some of that's because we're a really good defensive team at times. So that's all I'm saying is that we got to find that identity to be able to get, get this stop right here, right now. Get it, get this stop right here, right now. Get it. That's an energy thing. That's, an uh -huh. that's absolutely that's energy and attitude. And that's the thing we've talked about all the time with this team is absolutely. energy and attitude. Yep. Schematics, everything else. This team checks boxes everywhere else. But energy and attitude, TK, that was your red flag. D, that was one of the things you brought up earlier in the season. And it, leadership. It's always kind of been that way with this team, man. And, and leadership, agreed. And, it's, it's, and Pods brought up leadership. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's just being inconsistent with all of those red flags. You have to mm -hmm. be consistent in the tournament. Um, you know, identity, and, and, man. Got to have an identity. You know, talk about the bench, though. Uh, I agree with you. You like, you know, if if Caleb Foster was still here, it, it's like, okay, those are our six guys. You know, they can split up the, the, the 40 minutes, however they want to split them up. But right now, they got the five. And we thought maybe Sean Stewart, maybe Sean Stewart can pick it up, but boy, he had a tough a tough one, you know, in that game. And I hope that that doesn't, doesn't destroy him. Because mm -hmm. it very, very well could. Because, you know, as when his foot played, he was out there yelling, you know, Sean Stewart multiple times off, offensively and defensively. So, and you just watch the tape for that. But, you know, those are things, again, leadership lines. You know, if I'm in that player's only meeting, I'd be like, Flip, you're the man, you're the guy. You can't talk to your players like that. Or it's like, fuck, man, fuck you. I'm holding you accountable. So, I don't mm -hmm. know which way this team will go. Like, I just don't, I don't, I don't, Bob's, you know, pull everybody off here. Like, <sighs> man, be the leader we need. So, just man, 
just leadership, man. We just got to show better leadership, man. If I'm telling you, this is the fix for the team. It's not, you know, all this other intricate shit. You know what I'm saying? I, mm-hmm. I do think, you know, a small tweak to the offense, I think we'll be – We'll be straight. And I only say that because of how teams are playing us, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. defensively. Um, I think we'll be straight. I think our defense is solid enough to beat anybody. Um, as long as we keep our guys out of foul trouble, we're straight. Um, but more than anything, man, I think it's like, I, I mean, I said it 20 minutes ago when we started this conversation, just on-court leadership, man. You got to have, you know, preferably more than one. But, you know, if you do have that one guy, you know, he doesn't have to be having like a fucking – he don't have to be on, he don't, he doesn't have to be on triple double watch or anything, you know what I mean? To be a leader, you know what I'm saying? Like he just has to lead, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what type of game they're, they're having, you know what I mean? Or he's having, mm-hmm. you know, personally, he just needs to lead. We just need somebody to go out there and just lead period. When things go good, when things go bad, still through everything, just lead, man. Stop relying on John Shire for everything. Stop, you know, looking at him to call every play, you know, and he, like you said, he might be over coaching a little bit true i think you know what i'm saying he'll figure that part out that'll be all out of system but overall more than anything man just have that one guy you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's going that's going to cool everybody down man and, and bring it home for us last thing i'll say about this and then we can move to the next topic tk is i i agree with the lack of leadership but you're asking jeremy Rose to be a super senior leader and give you 30 points a game when you need 30 points a game very rarely do you have the leader of the basketball team being the that guy, the, the go-to guy or the leading scorer on the team. Like if you have that, you've got LeBron, you've got Kobe, you've got you've got that type of dude. So it's just a tough ask and it's probably mentally tolling on the kid. I, I can I can see that. I don't think we're asking him to give us 30 though. Uh I mean when we when Duke needs 30, yeah, they ask Jeremy Roach to give him 30. I figure they ask Kyle to get 30. Right. I feel like Flip is the one that no, we, we Flip, asked to get there. No, 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 no. Because Flip is supposed to get his regardless, right? It's Flip. Well, if, if our defense is good team. enough, then if Flip gets 30, then we should be able to take care of the rest. We could have taken care of the rest against NC State. Had, we not, with had, we, not, had we knocked down some shots? We should have been. I, don't, I mean, we only lost by, what, five? Was it five yeah, or four? Points. Like we hit two more and three. We lost four. Four. Well, so we lost, we lost by five. That's what I'm saying. Five. So we So Duke has to make those shots. A, a, a three-point shot, a layup here, and a free throw, and that's the game. And a, or a so shot. It's not, it's not or shots. Yeah. Look, I'm going to hit the shot. Shot, 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 shot. Everybody! All three of those shots. All three of those shots would have won the game. Yeah. All three of those missed shots would have won but the we game. We don't need him to score at 30. Yeah, I'm, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, my it's, point it's, is, when you're asking, when, when Duke asks a guy, hey, everybody's dead tonight. We need, we need you to hit 30. You're asking Jeremy Roach. Well, I mean, I, I, th- I don't think that's unfair just like, to ask just like at the end senior, of the game. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's unfair to ask if you're a senior All ACC player, though. Is is if when we need maybe it's not 30, but all right, we need a bucket here. When, when a guy who's proven that he can get those buckets, as a matter of fact. So Quinn I don't Cook, think that's unfair. Quinn to Cook ask. wasn't that guy. That was that's my that was my transit. Quinn well, Cook wasn't he did that it guy against UVA. He wasn't he did asked it. that, but he wasn't asked to be that guy. I mean, the dude was scoring like 15, 16 points a game. It's just a different. I mean, he was getting, he was getting buckets. Roach, it's a different thing. It's just Roach. like the national championship every, game. For us. Every like, time out, nice. play is drawn up for Roach, and you want him to be the leader. It's just I don't think I don't, I don't. I don't look at our team as plays being drawn up for Roach on a regular basis. I look, Roach is like our third option in a lot of cases. Like a lot of times, it's Flip and then Mark. Like the NC State game, for instance, was Flip then Mark. Like Flip then Mark was. It was consistently Flip then Mark as the number two option, and then whoever else got a shot after that. We talk about Tyrese Proctor all the time. Where's Reese? Because Reese, as good as he is and as talented he is as he is, we've had this debate already. Like I was on the Jeremy side of I want him to take our shots, but for the most part, collectively our podcast was saying it's got to be Reese. Understandably so, because he is the bigger, more talented player. And right now, Reese is less banged up than Roach. So I don't know that. Like, so are we conceding that that Reese is not going to be the player to get those points for us? Is that the concession at this point? No, I'm saying if a coach, if the coaches go to a player and they're like, I need this out of you tonight, they're going to Roach. They're not going to anybody else. My point was it's rare to be the leader and be the go-to guy leading scorer, such and such. 
Sometimes, sometimes I, I think it just it just depends on your team makeup and how good your players are. Like it's, it, it's, it's a definitely a different era of basketball right now with this one and done stuff. And like this is the Roach is the first senior we've had in a long time who can produce the way he produces. Most of our seniors that have come back just aren't good enough to play anywhere else other than the right league. league. So you exactly. can't ask them to be that leading scorer and be the leader, but they're always captains and stuff because they've been around the program longer than everybody else. So that, I mean, that's the difference there. Roach is the first guy in a long time that we've had who is, who is capable of doing that, but I don't think it's unfair. You can't coach every, leadership. everybody else. You can't, all the you other can't top coach teams, leadership. No, nah, but all the other top teams in the country are asking their seniors to do the same thing. We are asking what you're saying. We're asking of Roach. So, if we are compared to, if we're comparing ourselves to those other teams, because that's what we have to do, because we have to beat them. If we're comparing ourselves to those guys, we have a capable senior. We have a capable senior who's been a captain multiple times and who's shown in March that he can hit those shots multiple times. I don't think it's unfair to ask that of him. I don't, I don't think it's unfair. Lead, to if you're not a leader, you can't ask somebody to be a leader. That's just wild. I think I think I think from one standpoint, leadership is is innate, but on another, like you can coach. And teach leadership. Mm-hmm. You know, people can learn how to leader. be leaders. So Jeremy's been a leader since he's been a Paul Six, even before that. Like he's it might not be yeah, but it's different type of leadership right. too, though. Der- yeah. Jeremy is more of a lead by example type of dude. He's an example, he's like the, the vocal guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's that's all Jared McCain. You know, vocal lead by right. example. You know, and same thing with Flip. Flip is more of a lead by example guy. He's not really, you know. Doing all that talking, I mean, he's he's huffing and puffing, screaming at people and shit. Yeah, that's cool, but he's not, you know, getting everybody together. Hey, this is exactly what we need to right. do. Like, come on, he's like, more the bully him. like Leitner was. Yeah. He's, he's the bully right. on the team, right? Yeah, exactly. And so right. you need that calming presence, like we're talking about. So yeah, I mean, it's I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. That's the biggest thing. That's all we can do is see what. I mean, like all we can do is hope and hope that the players' only meeting worked. And I mean, every every. Every video that they've now put out for Duke, Jeremy Roach has been the voice of those videos and stuff. So maybe that mirrors what the team has become, especially yeah. after this players only meeting or whatever. So, you know what I mean? Like, we'll see what happens, man. I, yeah. I trust in the kid to be able to do the things, D, that you're saying is hard to do. I trust him to be able to do both of those things because he's done both of those things. He's been a leader for a team full of NBA stars. And he also has shown it on the court where he can get those points when when asked of him to get them. So, I don't think it's unfair to ask him again. I just think right now he's been hurt, he's been banged up, and he's tired. So ho- hopefully, again, this this week off and everything else has been has been you know a blessing for him. Yeah. Another he, reason why you need some sort of bench rotation. Sure, if he's tired, yeah, you got somebody. You got to be able to sub him out. It's just we don't have anybody on the bench who subs out his position necessarily, you, other than you, you really miss Foster right now. You really miss, miss Foster, Foster. but yeah, we don't have him, so we we don't have him, so we got to work without it. And they, they got a man up, they got a nut up without it. Stewart's got to show hey. up. Stewart regressed in five. Like I, I saw Stewart's regression in five minutes for a state like I've never seen before. For sure. I think I think he was showing. I think he was show shopped. But started it started a little bit versus UNC. You're like, whoa, dude, this is not the two games before Carolina game. Duke looked like one of the best teams in the country. The Holy last shit. NC State game, Sean Stewart, 26 minutes, put Mark Mitchell's ass on the bench. And, and, and five minutes and, in that NC State game, I was like, yeah. sit him down. Same game, sit same team, and he didn't play. Down, coach. Yeah. So it, he, he, he did. He, he, he sat him down. And Sean was on that bench pissed. He was mad over there. TJ yeah. Powell, over three, bro. Hey, bro, I'm I'm gonna need you to do, I'm gonna need you to put all the good job on the floor, or whatever, sticking with your man. I'm gonna need you to put some fucking numbers on the stat sheet, dude. Yeah. Straight yeah. up. It, Sorry. It Straight up. Sorry. Absolutely. It's a fair ask. One fair ask. Right. It's a fair ask, right? One one bucket from you know from Sean Stewart. Catch the pass from Flip and dunk it. These these TJ, plays are drawn up for him too. Y'all. Right. Like, exactly. it's, not, so, it's not unfair it's when you're trying to chase an NCAA championship. It's not unfair to ask all these things of these players. It's not I agree. That's what I'm I'm saying. Not. Like everybody should be held accountable and like 100%. the bench did not show the fuck up, just like have to Ryan start. Young didn't show up. I love we 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 give Ryan Young his praise. Ryan Young <clears> has been second guessing himself, pump faking himself out of shots, throwing the ball away, all kind of shit on offense, man. When when you know he's capable of putting up eight points in, on four layups or two lay four layup attempts, he can get eight points. He's got to be know that he can do watch it. the film too and be like, I should just not pump fake this time because they expect it. <laughs> like, but it's right, never changed. changed. 
Like it's it's hard to ask somebody to change when they've never think, done it. I think that might be some of the coaches' tweaks that that Pablo's talking about, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's the that's the coaching part of basketball. Like yep. I've noticed this on the floor, so why don't we do this? Yep. And great. we have a great staff. We have a great staff, and they can absolutely point out to these guys, and that's why the players only meeting might serve to be so important. <laughs> The staff is what it is. It's so good, and you got to hear it sometimes from your peers to say you're fucking up. You're fucking. Up. I'm fucking up. First, like hopefully Jeremy, when he walked into that players' only meeting, first thing he said was, "I'm fucking up. I'm gonna get better." And now it's your turn to do the same. I would just tell him, "Y'all, you fucking up your own money, y'all," mm-hmm. and then walk out the fucking room. <laughs> so I would say too. I would say too, like I just bring up like a just a, a random point, not random, but it all ties into all that shit that we talking about too. I just want everybody to 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 think that to think about this, right? All the games we lost has been by what five points or less or some shit Basically, like that. Average average of five point eight points. It's yeah, the lowest average. Five to eight points, five. right? You and C by just think about two. it. Yeah, now just think about it, right? Do you know how good you have to be to do that? You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. And and take away the player aspect, right? And then let's just talk about let's keep it in the realm of coaching right now. John Shire's doing a pretty damn good job. You know how good he's gonna be, man, in the next few years if he's only losing yeah. games by that little and oh, you know what I mean? Bro. We're not getting beat or blown out. Like, you know, a lot of these games that we're losing sometimes is coming down to like like TK said, like it's a it's an effort thing sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It is um, it's not so much an X's and O's and shit like that. Man, I'm, I'm I tell you, man, I'm I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing in that aspect. And you coaching it, you know what I'm saying for sure. Even and though too. I think that he can tone down a little bit of the uh, over coaching a little bit, but you know it's it's hard to even say that because you know they're winning. You know what I'm right. saying? So right, no yeah. five point eight five point eight points. Put that into perspective. That's a layup and a three, and then and then a free throw. A layup, a three, and a free throw, and you win every single game. You're undefeated mm-hmm. when your average margin of defeat is five point eight three points. That's, That's crazy, all that is, it? man. We first, ain't we ain't getting no, we ain't getting line, completely out coached by any guy. We ain't getting first completely line, beat man. by anybody. And that's why all the people calling for Shire's head just calm the fuck down. Like he will be fine. He's also learning. He's thirty six. He's thirty seven. He's old. His second year head coach. <clears throat> coaching at Duke. He doesn't have a perfect roster, even though he has a talented one. Kale Foster goes out. He's probably out for the year. We didn't get that five in the portal. Reeves goes down. Having to play flip out of position for the entire year, he has, you know, 67 losses by, you know, an average margin of 5.8. I can make, I can say that those are excuses, and I can, I can listen to that argument, but I can also look at the reality of the big picture that, to Pablo's mm-hmm. point, we'll be fine going forward. We will be fine. Maybe it won't happen this year, but we will have something brewing here over the and next, maybe it will. And maybe it will. Maybe it does know? happen this year. Maybe it will. Crazier things have happened. But um, I do want to get to uh, – because we, we are going to do a coach's corner in the next couple of days. I still, I still believe. I don't know. That's fair. We'll get to it. Um, but AC, yeah. we're going to do – we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do a coach's corner. Was that Thursday? You guys Thursday know? morning. We're gonna we're gonna put one out where we kind of just go over some different some stats, so maybe a couple little clips of some of the teams that uh, that we're gonna face in the tournament, or potentially could face in the tournament in the first in that first weekend. So it's just gonna be Wisconsin, JMU, Vermont. I'm not gonna look at anybody else. That's the way to do it. Um, all right, so let's get into a couple NCAA predictions. D, you still believe you got that Duke Energy shirt on. Give us your prediction for just uh let's start with the final four. Just give us your final four and then we'll and then we'll specifically talk about uh Duke's region. But you can if Duke's in your final four or whoever obviously whoever's coming out of the out of the south, you know, give us your final four and why. Yeah, that East region is crazy, right? Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of good teams there. <clears throat> I like it Florida Atlantic a lot. <clears throat> I think Ohio State's really good. Duquesne is gonna is gonna shock people. Duquesne's a really good basketball team. Um, I'll take Florida Atlantic out of that. I'll make a run if we're if we're betting. I'll take Florida Atlantic to make the Sweet Sixteen at least. So you right? got Florida Atlantic in the East. <sighs> Auburn though. just to the Sweet Sixteen, or do you have them going all the way to the Final Four? I can see them going all the way. I, you can make a case for that. 
Okay. Um, give me Auburn. I think they're battle tested. I'll take Auburn. I'll take Auburn. Uh, we got in the West here. Uh, I've looked at this so many times. You know, the more you look at this, the more you change your mind. <laughs> yeah, every time, man. Every time. <laughs> How crazy By the way, Wagner be, Wagner punched their ticket over uh, Kenny Blatney and Tyler Thornton, unfortunately. How crazy would it see to be Michigan State make a run at that? They are getting better. I think Colgate beats Baylor, by the way, people. I'm going to book that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's tough not to say Arizona or UNC. Give me Arizona. All right. Uh, rapid so fire, have, yeah. Have, the only have, second guess is a rapid have, fire. We got Florida Atlantic and Arizona. Is that what we got? Yeah, yep. I like that. That's he a said Auburn. Experience. He said Auburn. Oh, he oh, said so, Auburn. I'm sorry. Oh, Auburn. yeah. I did switch oh, that to Auburn. Okay. Auburn. Auburn and Arizona. Auburn and Arizona. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Duke, which I, I mean, you can make an argument for Duke over any of these teams. That's a winnable bracket. Mm -hmm. I agree. Houston's mm -hmm. been beat by 20 plus, like, I, I feel like eight times this year. <laughs> well, they have four losses. <laughs> four losses at twenty plus equals eight. <laughs> that that adds up. Oh Correct. my god, the math, math, the Correct. math, math. Thank you. All right, <laughs> right along. Purdue, you know, is out first weekend. I get them. Let them know. Tennessee's a tough out. I mean, I know Rick Barnes like to lose big games, like and and not do good things, but. Tennessee is a tough out. I'll take Tennessee. Has Barnes been in the Final Four? I don't think Hell so. No. I think he was in an Elite no. Eight with Durant. No, I think he's only yeah. ever been to the Elite Eight. I don't think he's think been so. to the Final Four. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we got, we got Hickory, got North Auburn, Carolina, Rick Barnes. Auburn, Arizona, Duke, and Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. Wow, so you're getting, you're getting a Duke-Tennessee matchup then. I'll take that. All right, and so you, you take them Duke in that? Yeah, dude. I'm not gonna. I'm. You're. You're not gonna catch me not saying Duke. I'm, 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 fair, I'm, fair. I won't do Duke it. versus the '92 Dream Team. Let's go. Duke's winning. Uh, yeah, like God and What's his up? crew, like all of them. <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> and then, and then you got uh, Arizona and Auburn. Who we got there? Again, Auburn, man. I think Auburn's battle tested. All right, so Duke, Duke versus Auburn, and I assume you got Duke winning it all. Yeah, I'll take Duke. All right, Duke over Auburn. Uh, Pablo, who do you got? What are we talking about? The East and the West? You can talk about all four. Just give me your final four. If you want to break it down more, you can. But, um, you know, your final right. four picks. And then, you know, who you got? I, I got Duke winning the chip. Thank you. Duke in the, I got all four teams. It's, it's all four Duke. And uh, Duke winning the chip. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> That's great. Nah, so participate. So I think who comes out of the East? I ain't gonna break it down in like all the teams. Yeah. I think UConn will probably come out of the East. To be honest with you, and um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got Iowa, Iowa State. I feel like Iowa State is ultimately is gonna come out of the East, uh, just because of that defense and shit. Um, you think they play Auburn of, for that? They, I think they have smoke. I'll be honest with you. I think they have smoke Auburn. I'm, I'm saying, do you think Auburn is playing for that Final Four spot with no. Iowa State? No? Absolutely okay. not. Mm -hmm. No. Auburn is ass. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'll move on. So, I got coming out of the East, I got Iowa State. Um, coming out of the West. That's wild to say. Auburn's a wild. What, that? Auburn's good. I don't know what you're talking about. Nah, Auburn is good. Auburn is good. I can't front. They good. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I don't have a lot of confidence in Bruce Pearl like that, man. You know that is saying? a That's a gauntlet of a bracket, by the way. That East division, that, that is tough. Yeah, yeah that, that East that. bracket is, that shit is I tough, think, dude. Holy honestly, shit. Honestly, I think the West bracket is the weakest bracket. I agree. West bracket is the weakest bracket. West sure. bracket is Or West Midwest. Bracket. You can say Midwest, too. Especially with color being out for Kansas. They're gonna lose. Yeah, man. You can say the Midwest is even weaker. And honestly, in this West bracket, bro, I probably would say, "Fuck, man." I think I wouldn't. Man, I can see Mississippi <laughs> State. I'm a. I can see Mississippi State coming out of this joint, man. I'm. I'm gonna throw oh, it out there. Like I know that. you cannot. 
Dog, I'm, Mississippi real State. Tough. No, you cannot. They tough, bro. Okay. Mississippi State's, tough, Mississippi State's going to beat UNC, bro. Bro, I'm telling How's you. How's Mississippi they State going to beat, beat UNC, UNC when Michigan State beats Mississippi State? They ain't going to beat Mississippi State. <laughs> bro. Just like every gonna tournament, the Big Ten is going to be out in the first weekend. Okay. Big Ten's going to be out in the first, okay. Okay. Gonna gonna out the first weekend like every tournament since 2000. Mm. In the South region, obviously, Duke going to come out of that. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. So I ain't even going to talk about that. In the Midwest joint, Purdue is losing in the first round. Uh, yep. Uh, Gonzaga's losing in the first round. Um, yeah, uh, South Carolina's probably going to lose by 40. Um, what? So man, coming out of that Midwest, bro, give me Tennessee, bro. Coming out of the Midwest, bro. Give me Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? We're going to line it up like that. So I got in my final four, I got Tennessee, uh, Duke, Mississippi State, and <laughs> <laughs> nah, yo, stop laughing, bro. Oh, look, you're, like you're it, cool, I like it, bro. I like and it. And I got um, who was the other team that I picked? You caught. <laughs> This shit is so small, bro. I can't see. Bro. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't get it. In. I tried to. I tried to zoom it in. I tried to zoom it yeah, in. Yeah, bro. Can't this shit it. is mad small. That's why I'm looking crazy. I'm oh. looking crazy at this shit. So, yeah, that's my final four. Though. All right. So that's my you, final four. Right. So Iowa, Iowa State, you said. Iowa State, dog. Oh, Iowa, State. Iowa State, UConn, Duke, and uh, Tennessee, bro. <laughs> and, then I, and then in the champion in the chip in the championship game, I got. Duke and Iowa State, bro. All right. All right. Duke and Iowa State. AC, who you got? <laughs> Look, I'll keep it. I'll keep it real short and simple. This is what yeah. I'm putting on most of my brackets. I'm gonna go with um. Out of the East, I have Auburn coming out of the East. Out of the West, I got Dayton coming out of the West. That's been my sleeper all year. I got uh, Duke coming out of the South, obviously, and I got Tennessee coming out of the Midwest. I got Duke and Dayton with the Dayron Holmes Bowl to win the national championship. That would be wild. Get, get Should have come get to Duke in the first place, motherfucker. So, yeah. so AC, me and you got three of the same. Yeah, and and, and I'm and I'm gonna give you the point total too, one thirty eight. Oh, wow. wow. All right, um, all right. So I'll, I'll round this up here. I, I guess I'm going more in shock than everybody else. I got UConn. I think they've been the best team all year. Um, I got Arizona out of the West. They're gonna be playing at home in the Final Four. I got UConn winning that game, so they'll be in the championship. I got Creighton coming out of the Midwest. And then I got Duke, obviously, coming out of the South. Uh, and then I think we got a rematch. I think there's Duke and UConn, all the haters uh, all over all over Twitter, all over social the media. Flag bowl. UConn. Yeah, you wanted the home bowl, now we got the flag bowl. And uh, I think Duke finds a way to avenge 1999 and 2004 uh, and, and kind of down. So there we have it. Um, those are our picks. Uh, real quick, I just want to tell all of our haters all of our YouTube haters to come on every time we lose. Just want you to keep that same energy when we're not there. I want you to keep that same energy when we're kicking your fucking ass. So it's very easy to come into our comments and talk some shit. And keep on not going to be down So when we win, and we will win, I want you all back here giving me that same energy. Fuck everybody else. Let's go Duke. But for Let's go Duke. Let's go Duke. Make sure you Let's go, man. Let's go. Hey, man, make sure y'all like follow the Patreon. We're going to have a lot of stuff coming up on the Patreon, man, with the Coach's Corner and all those things. We got the, we obviously are on Twitter. All of us, you see us on there. We're going to have spaces. Make sure you still follow the podcast on all the platforms, including Autograph. We're over there. Thank you, Tom Brady. Uh, let's go, Duke, baby. This is it, man. This is, this is March. March Kentucky, man, Kentucky losing time. in the first round. Get them up. Everybody loses in the first round. <laughs> I'm just saying. Duke, 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 and Duke in the final four. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Duke.